Now that you have an idea of what you'd like to major in, let's go ahead and find some colleges that are the best match for you. Also, for those that are still not too sure, don't stress. My recommendation would be to choose colleges that are good overall programs. Typically, that's the top 150 to 200 institutions. But once again, we still need to go through the steps to ensure that the cultural aspects will at least meet your needs since you don't know what majors or career paths you're interested in just yet. This is going to take some time, a few weeks, and if you're watching this series earlier and you have months, even better. What I am asking you all to do though, is keep an open mindset. Oftentimes students such as yourself come into this process having preconceptions that you want certain schools due to the prestige or because it's an Ivy or a UC or your cousins went to that school. You'd be surprised how many amazing schools there are out there. And all you need to do is keep that open mindset and think through what are some of the characteristics that you're looking for. There's an amazing tool that I'll walk you through in order to learn more about what you're interested in in college. And then we'll talk through the academic side as well as the intrinsic side. All right, let's hop over to the computer so we can get started. We're here at Corsava, which is a tool that will be helping you all learn more about your preferences when it comes to college. And I will be linking this down below, so go ahead and click on that link. You'll go to Corsava.com slash for students. And then once you click on sign up for free, it'll be asking you to create an account. And then once you're in the tool, go ahead and click on card sort. And here we go, we'll go ahead and get started. I actually started this a little bit earlier, but let me start from the beginning. You're gonna have 138 questions and it's not as long as you think it's gonna take. I would say it's anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, but don't rush through it. Take your time because I want you to get accurate results in order to mold your proper college list. So some of the questions will say, how important is international relations to you? You can click anywhere from must have, would be nice, do not care in no way. And once you bucket all this, it will come up with all of the responses that you have and put it into different categories and make sure that you're in a quiet space in order to focus on this 100%. Once you get this done, go ahead and save your results. It should be popping up right after you complete the 138 questions. Welcome back. I hope those 138 questions wasn't too bad. This is how the results should be looking like for you. So let's dig in a little bit deeper. So today, what we're gonna be focusing on is interpreting these results, seeing if that really resonates with you. Do you feel like these are your must haves? Would it be nice? You can always feel free to move things around. This isn't an end all be all. And you'll be utilizing these results by embedding it into your college criteria and what you definitely want versus what you don't want. So pay attention to this as well just in case this will help you process eliminate any colleges. I'll show you two different methods as you do your research on colleges. First, I recommend you start with a blank canvas. There's some templates down below to keep you organized, but if you're one of those folks that want some guidance up front and want some schools to work off of, I've added a few popular majors that previous students have really enjoyed, like computer science, bio for instance. But what I recommend is that you work backwards by ensuring that the schools on that list meets those intrinsic values that came up from your Corsava results that we just talked about. First, I wanted to share some advice before we jump into the trackers slash templates I'll be sharing with you. I want you to take notes while you're doing this research on each school, because when you're applying to these colleges, they'll be asking you questions to see why you're interested in their school. Wouldn't it be great if you've already done that pre-research while you're doing research on the school? Sounds like a win-win to me. So I hinted to you earlier that there are two main categories when you're building your college list, which is the academic side, what majors you're interested in, what is the career path you're looking into. And then another is intrinsic, which is what we got from Corsava, a little bit more difficult to measure the qualities that you're looking for in a college. My preference is always to start on academics since it'll help you narrow down a few options. And that's once again, the whole purpose of going to college. I look for programs that have high percentage of students being employed after graduation, selected for programs for further education, professors that are highly esteemed, 
location of the school often offers different internship opportunities. So say if you're someone that's interested in politics, more than likely Washington DC area might be the best uh, place if you've already decided for sure you wanted to get into politics since the proximity to the White House and the Hill, as they call it, are going to have a lot of options for internship opportunities. Okay, so you can find this tracker in the notes down below. Go ahead and click on it. And then I want you to go ahead and make a copy of it. Click make a copy. And some of you know I love Google Drive, so I hope you've already created a folder for your college needs. If not, go ahead and do that. You click on My Drive, select, and then you press My Drive. And then there's this little button here that says New Folder. You click on that, and then you would just put college planning or whatever the case is. And then press check and then select. So you can go ahead and add this in here. And you can always create mini folders in here. And just, I love um, Google Drive so much. So I really suggest that you go ahead and do this to keep organized. All your essays should be in here too. So go ahead and press select, make a copy. So once you've already made a copy, I want you to input your preferences here. And I'm sure you've already noticed that I added this earlier. Don't worry, the templates won't have this pre-populated. I want you to add your own. And so I added the ones that we got from Corsava into here just to keep us honest on what we wanted. And I know that there's areas where you didn't want, if you want, you can put your absolutely no preferences down below, but let's just zero in on what you do want. And this tracker is going to have areas where you can put the college name, location, your personal rating if you like the school or not. And this is gonna take some time, so no pressure in filling this out immediately. And then the ranking for the major, this is, you can go off of US News, College Board, Naviance. I'll show you in just a bit how to find those rankings. And then the campus size, if you care about smaller, larger, medium-sized schools. Also the average acceptance rates. I always recommend to keep tabs on this because we want to be realistic with the schools that we're applying to and we need to be bucketing them into highly selective schools, target schools and safety schools in order to have a balanced list. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Average GPA also similar to how acceptance rates are to figure out the selectivity. Classes and research that you're really keen on student organization support programs, demonstrated interest. So demonstrated interest means the schools track if you've already expressed interest, either going to events or logging into their website, their college website, talking to a representative, a recruiter, for instance. There's a lot of different ways you can demonstrate this. And I'll link some more information about these different strategies in the notes down below cost which we'll talk about different tools and then i added a section where it's other so you can just add in as much more information that you would need depending on your requirements and a little bit more extra space if you need it as well and you can see right here that there's a my final list section which i'll explain a little bit more in detail later but don't focus too much on this i don't want to overwhelm you too much let's just focus on the research for this section all right, now that you understand more about the tracker itself, let's talk about the different strategies in doing our research. I like Google search a lot because oftentimes they use ranking systems that are quite unbiased to look into the different schools. And let's say that you're interested in computer science college rankings, go ahead and click on that. And here's some search results. If you're undergraduate, make sure you pay attention to undergraduate because oftentimes they might be giving you graduate programs, and just for the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming undergraduates, what you're aiming for. All right, so it's giving you up to 500 results, which is a lot. Where do we even start, Tiff? So I would recommend basis off of your GPA, you can make your own call on this, how many schools you really wanna look into. Realistically, you should be applying to anywhere from 10 to 15 schools maximum. Depending on your GPA, if it's a little bit lower, sure, on the higher end is better just to cast a wider net. But if you have a pretty competitive GPA, then I would say, so if you're going through this method of doing academics first, obviously just go through some of these schools, see if they sound enticing to you, keeping in mind those intrinsic values that we just talked about from Corsava that we added into our tracker. And then let's just go ahead and click into Stanford. 
And you can see that it's number six nationally, highly competitive, and you can learn more about the school and what makes them special by scrolling down here, right here, selective acceptance rate of 5%, very selective. And then you can see what the average SAT scores are as well. And then you can learn more about the application deadlines, if they're going to be taking any early admissions as well. I know that you might need to pay a little extra in order to understand the GPA itself, but honestly, each school has the GPA average on their actual website. So you don't have to pay for this, but if you want to, because it's more efficient, go for it. It's not that expensive. And you can click around here, say that you're someone that doesn't know what they want to major in. You can go to rankings and see what they're good at overall. So that that way you can learn if you still wanna to go to that school because overall they're still ranked super high for all majors overall, it seems. And then you can click on student life to learn more about the size. You can take note of that, add it to your tracker. I know that this is just academics, the numbers, but if you're feeling like it is a good school option for you, go ahead and add it to that tracker that we were just talking about. And then we'll look into the more details like classes and research individually. So we'll dig deeper every single time you start adding schools into the list. But for now, we're just going to start wide, add college names in there by deciding if it sounds interesting enough to dig deeper. Play around with this tool. There's a tuition and financial aid section as well that's going to be helpful. I'll talk a little bit more about costs in another section of this series. So for now, this is just a high overview that's not tailored to you, okay? All right, so that's option one, Google search, US News. You can do the same for Naviance and College Board. And there's also College Express, which is a great tool that a lot of students really like as well. So let me go ahead and show you how to use College Express very quickly. Now we're on College Express, which I'll link everything down below. Go ahead and click on it and you'll go to list and rankings. So recall what you were interested in, right? Like for me, what I really liked was a bike friendly campus which I learned how to ride a bike in college, actually, when I studied abroad in the Netherlands, and it was rough, but now I really like biking, which is cool. All right, biking, look at that. Bike-friendly campus is Wisconsin Hidden Gems. And maybe I could have done bike-friendly, just in general. All right, I just put in bike, so you gotta play around with it. And it looks like there's some schools in Portland, Oregon, which I've heard that Portland is very bike friendly. So this is something to look into. And I actually heard UC Davis is quite bike friendly too. So if there's not much that's coming out from College Express, I would go back to our handy dandy Google search and um, look into that. Let's see if there's something that comes up. So what I did here was just put in bike friendly campus on Google search, which, you know, oftentimes in this college search process, you need to be your own detective and figure out what through the resources that you have online. And I'll teach you other ways to do it in person. But look at this. I found one that says bicycling.com. It sounds pretty credible, but there's also like um, bike league.org, great value schools.net. So just click around. You might be able to see some schools show up in multiple lists. And then look at this. Their list, they have University of Kentucky, Maryland College Park, which was actually on the U.S. News rankings for computer science. So since this school has multiple check marks for you, bike friendly, computer science, add that to your list or make a note of it. UW is also highly ranked for computer science too. So I would highly recommend to add that as well. Don't just um, look at the highly ranked schools. If this meets some of your other criteria, write it down and just do a little extra research to see if it's something that would be a match for you.
Also, I want you to pay a special attention if some of these schools require demonstrated interest, which I explained earlier. If you're talking to admissions officers, they oftentimes take note of that when you're going to events and whatnot. So say, for instance, I had Stanford on our list, right? So Stanford, and then I would just put it into Google search or go to the Stanford website to see if they require it. Look at that. Stanford does not track demonstrated interest as part of the admissions process. And this is from Stanford themselves. So this is quite credible. I wouldn't even worry too much about making sure you sign up for all these events. But if you are planning to add this to your list and seriously considering going to this school, I would really recommend that you visit. And if you can't physically visit, you should do a virtual visit, which a lot of schools are offering these days. And oftentimes it's pretty crowded. So make sure you try to sign up early. All right. So once again, there's no perfect formula on how to do this college search. I know that there's so many different components to think about it, but that's why we have this amazing tracker to really keep us grounded and making sure that we're staying focused on what it is that we're actually interested in and putting in the information in an organized fashion so you can start ranking it for yourself when time comes as well. And I would say once you start filling this out and you can start doing more research on the classes, organizations, some students like to just get the essence done. So like A through G and then do more detailed research on the classes, organizations, all that sorts, because imagine doing this for like really tiring and if you're someone that already has an idea where they want to go, go ahead and just add these schools on here, but continue to do some research because you don't want to stop yourself from applying to a school that you might actually enjoy more. All right, so that's your homework. I want you to continue this search. Once again, this is going to take a few weeks. Things can evolve, but we want to do this no later than early October because that's when early action, early decision is going to be due around late October, early November. So we got to get going on things. Once you finish some of this research, move on to the next session where I'll share more tips on how to check for intrinsic value when it comes to colleges. And then we'll talk about cost. So it's more so these columns H through L. See you in the next one.